Hey friends and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to see how we can spice up our matplotlib bar charts. By default, bar charts that are generated through matplotlib are boring and unexciting and not very informative. And it usually takes a little bit of extra code to go from something like this to something like this. And this allows us to generate a much more informative graphic for our readers. Bar charts are probably one of the first data visualizations you come across in your data science and Python journey. They allow us to compare different categories and the length or the height of the bars represents the value that is contained or represented by each of those categories. Matplotlib can easily generate bar charts with a few lines of code. However, with a little bit of perseverance, we can easily extend that code and generate something that is much more visually appealing. So let's go over to our Jupyter Notebook and see how we can take several steps to convert this simple bar chart into something that is much nicer to look at for the reader and also more informative. So the first step we need to do is import some of the libraries. And for this particular tutorial, we're going to import pandas as pd, and we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Next, we're going to create some data, and this data is derived from the Zeek and Force 2020 machine learning lithology competition that was run a few years ago. You can find details about that data set down in the description below if you want to explore it further. So rather than going through the pre-processing of that data to derive these values, I've simply just created a dictionary with the porosity values within the hug information from all of the available wells. And there's only a handful that encounter this formation. So here we've got our dictionary, we've got our well name, and we've got our porosity and percentage. We take those values and then we convert them into a data frame so that we can begin working with them. Now if I call upon df, we now have our data frame and we can see that we've got all of these values in here. We've got our well name and we've got our porosity. So let's start creating our bar chart. And the way that we're going to do this is we're just going to build it up slowly so that we transform it from the very basic and boring matplotlib figure that we saw in the introduction to something that is much better and much more readable for our readers. So the first thing we need to do is create a figure and axes. And we'll set that equal to plt.subplots and we'll set the fig size equal to 8 by 8. Then we create a variable called bars and we'll set that equal to plt.bar and then we can pass in df and we're going to pass in the well. So this is our well column and we're going to pass in the porosity. So once we've done that, we can call upon plt.show to show the figure and we can run that and what we get back is this very bland matplotlib figure. We've got blue bars, we can't make out the text on the x-axis, it's just not great. So we need to do some work to transform that. So the first thing we're going to tackle is dealing with these labels on the x-axis. Now, as we've got short names, this normally isn't a problem. However, we've got quite a number of them. In this case, we've got 18. And the simplest way when we're dealing with labels that are long or overlapping like this, when we've got many categories, we can rotate the bar chart and this allows us to read those labels. There is another way where we can rotate the labels themselves, 90 degrees. However, you have to start looking at the plot with a tilted head to be able to read those labels. So it's not very comfortable for the reader. And so the simplest way is to rotate the entire figure. And we can do that just by using the exact same code that we have above. But instead of calling plt.bar, we can call plt.barh. And that's the only change I'm making here. So when we run that, we now have our horizontal bar chart. And we can read all of the well names easily without tilting our head. And there's no overlapping of the labels. The second way that we can improve this is to arrange the bars in a specific order or ascending order. And this just helps to improve readability, especially when you want to highlight certain values. For example, you want to show the range where you've got high values all the way down to low values. And that way you're creating a story. So at the moment, if we look at this bar chart, it's hard to tell well, what one's the most. Well, we've got 25 slash 87 and we've got 16 slash 10, 1. So these both look almost the same. So I don't know what one is the best out of those two. And another thing to consider is if you've got a lot of bars that are very similar in value, however, there's a very small difference in them, 
it can be hard to distinguish which one is better or higher or has a, a higher value. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the code that we've got above again, and we just add a new line in, the, in at the top. We'll call our data frame again, and we call df.sort underscore values, and then we sort it by porosity, which is our porosity column. So when we run that, we now get back this bar chart, and we can see that it's nicely sorted, and it's just easier to look at. It's more aesthetically pleasing. So we can see the higher values up here. So we can see that the 2587 is actually higher than 1610 1. So there is a slight difference in that. And we can confirm that by going back up to our values. So 1610 1 is 26.0. And then 2587 is 26.1. So there's 0.1 of a porosity percentage difference. So the first step that we're going to do to change this figure is to remove any unnecessary chart junk. So that includes spines, which are the borders around the chart, any grid lines, any extra stuff that we don't really need. So when you see some charts in other places, you may see all the grid lines, you see uh, all the, the axes, and it just gets very confusing when you're looking at all this extra information and you're only wanting the reader to focus on the data itself. We just want to get rid of that and clean up this figure. We can do that again just by copying what we've got and then we just change a few lines within this. So I'm going to call upon X, which is our axes, and I'm going to set the spines and we're going to call upon a list so we can select the right the top one and the bottom one. So let's call upon right and we'll also set the top and we'll set the bottom spine. And what we're going to do is call set underscore visible and we'll set that to false. If we ran that as it is, at the moment, we're just going to have floating numbers on the x-axis. So we can remove that by calling upon x dot x-axis and we'll set the visibility of that to false. So already we've got a much cleaner figure and we're focusing now on the actual bars. So we can see these values, we can see the, the categories and we are already starting to tell a story in a clean sort of way. As we remove the axes and now all the labels, we now need to add something back in to, in order for the reader to understand what the values are for each of the bars. And we can do that, again, copy and paste, and we're going to add in just an extra line of code. So axe.bar underscore label, and we're going to pass in our bars object. So we've created our bars object here, and then that's going to be passed into this bar underscore label. So we can run that, and what we get back is this plot where we now have the actual values. So this just makes it a little bit easier to read. So we can see, okay, that's 26.1, that's 26. So I'm not putting extra effort in to try and interpret the chart like I am up here. So I'm trying to work out what value this is. Okay, right, come down to the axis. Oh, it's probably about 25. Whereas if you provide the values, your reader will actually just go to that value. Oh, it's 26.1%. So they're getting that information right away. So we can control the, the way that these labels are displayed uh, by passing in extra parameters to this bar underscore label function. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the padding is equal to minus 45. So padding, and we're going to set the color to white. We'll set the font size equal to 12, and then we'll call the label type, and we'll set that equal to edge. So it's going to sit on the edge. And then we want to set the format of it. So at the moment you can see it's 26.1, then we've got 26, then 23. So we've got varying degrees of precision in our values. So we just want to make this all consistent. And we can do that by passing in the parameter format and we set that equal to percentage dot one F percentage percentage. And that is going to set the values to one decimal place and use a percentage sign at the end. And finally, we'll set the font weight equal to bold, just to make it a little bit easier to read. So when we run that, we now have our values and we can see that they're now on the inside of the bars. So we're not taking up extra room by placing them on the end, but we've now got them inside and that's what our padding here is doing. So if I set that to 45, 
you'll see that the values disappear because they are sat over here somewhere. If I set this to minus 45 in this particular instance, we now see that we are within the bars. Now if I wanted to say, let's just set this to 65, we can then start nudging them along the bars. But I found for this example, 45 seems to be the best value for this. We've got the bar chart, it's much more readable, but just to make it a little bit easier to identify the bars, we can increase the spacing between the bars here. So let's copy what we've done, and we can then start to adjust the height parameter within here. So if I say height is equal to 0 0.7, then we should have slightly smaller bars. Now it still looks a little bit cluttered, but we can change that by changing the height of the figure. So I'll set this to 12. So there we are, it's now, now slightly more spread out, slightly bigger, and we can easily have a bit of breathing space around our bars. And it's easier on the eye as well when the reader is looking at this. So the next step is to add some color. Now we could go crazy and assign a color to every single bar on this plot, but that sort of goes against what we're trying to do. We're wanting to create clarity for the reader, so we don't want to confuse them with all these extra colors. So one way that we can do that is either draw attention to a specific bar, so maybe we'll want to see the maximum, or we want to see values or bars that are above a certain cutoff value, or maybe we want to highlight a specific category, if, if we wanted to highlight a specific well, for example. So if we wanted to draw attention to a specific bar, we're going to copy what we've got and we need to add in some extra information. So for to highlight a specific bar within our, within our plot, we need to call upon the well name or our category. And we just keep these as variables as it just makes it a little bit easier to work with rather than writing them all in code. This way we can easily change it and update it as we go along. So if I select 16 slash two dash 16 and we'll say the highlight color uh, is going to be equal to a hexadecimal value i'll copy what i've uh, got over here so that uh, i'm not typing some random numbers and digits and then we have our non-highlight color as well and we'll say non-highlight color is equal to Oh, uh, double quotes, I'll take that off. So now we've got our colors. One way to apply the colors to a specific bar is to create a new column within our data frame, and I'll call this colors. We need to then assign that to DF, and we'll set that to well. So we're going to use the well column to select our well, and then we're going to apply a lambda function. And this will allow us to quickly apply uh, a simple function to set the color for our particular well to our highlight color and then the rest to the non-highlight color. So we've got lambda x and we'll set that to highlight underscore color. And we'll set if x is equal to well name. And then we'll set the else part of it then we'll set it to non-highlight color. So what this is going to do is highlight the well name if it is matching what we specify here. So let's run this. Oh, I forgot to apply the color to our actual bar chart. So we just need to pass in the color argument here and we'll set that to DF colors. And there we have it. So now when you're presenting this to your audience, then you're highlighting a specific well within this particular series of wells. So this well here, you are wanting to highlight that to them so their eye is immediately drawn to that well and then they can see how it compares to the others within that data set. So we could change this a little bit. So if we wanted to say have a porosity cutoff, so just copy that again and we'll change this to a porosity cutoff. So it doesn't have to be porosity, we could be plotting any other kind of values that are associated with categories. We'll set this to 20 in this instance, and then we just change the lambda function so that we can say that if x is greater than well name, in this case we need to change that to porosity, then we can just run that and we get back our bar plot. And oh, so we've got porosity cutoff. If it's greater than our porosity cutoff, 
So we're not using the well name anymore, we're using porosity. So what we're trying to do is compare a string to an integer. So if I have changed that to porosity, it should now work. And now we've highlighted the bars that are above 20% porosity. So this is great. So we can now tell the story that maybe these wells down here are below our porosity cutoff, and then these wells up here are actually okay and good. So let's just inform the user, what, why are these bars highlighted? Well, we can apply a simple line. And what we're going to do is we will set a, an ax, ax.axv line, which is short for vertical line. And then we'll set that to x is equal to the porosity cutoff that we've got up, up here. We'll set the z order is equal to zero so that it sits behind our bars. And then, we're going to set the line style, which is equal to two dashes. So we've got a dash line and we'll set the line width to 1.5. Next, we need to tell them what this actual line represents. And we can do that by adding x.text and we'll say x is equal to our porosity cutoff and our s or string is equal to, we'll make that a formatted string so that we can change the value if we wanted. So we can say we've got our porosity cutoff percentage and we can call it, say porosity cutoff here and we'll set the horizontal alignment equal to center and font size is equal to 14 and then we'll set our uh, bounding box so our bounding box is what surrounds that text so b box and we'll set that equal to a dictionary and we'll set the face color as equal to white and, oh, and edge color uh, is equal to gray and finally line style is equal to dash dash oops so we put that in, in there and that should be good what have i missed my my position where our label is going to sit and we'll set that equal to one okay so now we've got our line however it's turned blue and what i've done is missed the color argument up here and pass that in and there we go so now when a reader looks at this they know why these bars are highlighted in orange and we could potentially change this value if we wanted but they know that this is a 20 percent cutoff so if i said I want this to be 5%. I'm hoping this will run. We can see that all of them are above our 5% cutoff. However, we would just need to alter the label so that we are in the right place. So let's just change this to maybe 15% and we can see right away. So immediately we've already improved the figure. And the final thing that we're going to do is add a title to this. So we take our code that we've got above and paste it in here. And then we just change our title. So we can say x, x dot set underscore title. And for this one, we'll say wells with, uh, we'll do an F string. We'll come back and change that porosity cutoff. Um, uh, wells with greater than 20% porosity in the Huggin formation. We just need to change that to an F string and we should just be able to run that and we now have our title. So we can change this title a little bit and add a few extra parts to it. So maybe we want this a little bit bigger. So we'll change the font size and we'll set that equal to 20. So 20 pixels and then we'll set the font weight equal to bold and finally We'll set some padding equal to 20. So we've got some space around that title. There we go. It's not the prettiest title. However, it tells the reader exactly what they're going to look at. We've got the extra information here about the, the porosity cutoff, how, how the other wells relate to that. So even though Matplotlib can appear daunting to work with at first, we can simply, with a few extra lines of code, go from something like this down to something like this. It's much easier to look at, much more informative, and it is much more aesthetically pleasing to look at. So maybe I've not picked best colors here, but you can change them to suit your needs. So I'll just leave the next video up here. If you've enjoyed this content, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, click on that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. 
So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.